But I want to leave that positivity behind and I want to end and finish up by talking about Chelsea and where they go from here. Because I'm going to give you the lineup tonight. How many of these players would each of you start with or think would start the first league game of next season? Kepa in goal as Piliqueta, Bofana, Thiago Silva and Ben Chilwell. N'Golo Kante, Enzo Fernandez, and Mateo Kovacic. Madweki, Aubameyang, and Sterling. How many of them, roughly, start with you, Janish, do you reckon will start the first game of next season? Well, there's quite a few. I think the issue they, they, they have, and they've put themselves in, is going to be a big question of how many of the players that uh, need to be going, uh, they're going to be get, uh, able to get rid of, right? If you look at financial fair play, uh, we know there's money, but a lot's going to be depend on the movement out, and 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 a lot of them will. I mean, Enzo Fernandez is going to be be fine with, with Conte, with better players around them. We've seen them. We've seen that internationally, and Thiago Silva is still going to be fine. Chilwell is probably going to be there. Kepa could be right they have two go good goalkeepers uh so so take you take your pick but uh i think i think they're at a point right now that just like us they find themselves in a situation that they didn't anticipate maybe they should but they didn't and there's there's probably zero idea how to go from there because first and foremost they have to nail down a manager who i don't know if it, that manager can guarantee him that but you know a, a leadership where they feel comfortable somebody like a ten hag that comes in a moment of crisis where you don't expect it i mean let's not forget where manchester united were mm -hmm. in the beginning of the season Good point uh, so so you know finding a leader like that is not easy but that to me is is the first thing because if the team believes then i believe there's enough players there that if you just add a couple pieces uh, can compete again when i say compete not being the 12th place but maybe you know have a fight for top four because that team i don't see how possibly can can fight for the title uh, next year so before we we talk about players we need to talk about the director of football we need to talk about the proper uh, manager because managers have the ability to do that and you know there are not many of them around but that to me is the first point because to say now that this player should stay or not it all depends on 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 who's going to be the manager how he, how he sees the game James, after you answer that question about how many of the players do you think will start first game of next season, if you could also give us a, a wee update, if you don't mind, about Pochettino, what the latest is, and if it is to be him, why are they taking so long to announce it? Uh, well, first question, I, I'm just going through it here. I think six is okay. probably the maximum because I think they'll look to upgrade the goal. I actually think uh, Kep has done all right since he's come back in. Uh, I think we did okay tonight. Um, but I think they'll look to upgrade the goalkeeper position. Um, Kovacic not been offered a new deal yet. This talk that he might, he could be one that moves on. Aubameyang will definitely move on. Difficult. I think Raheem Sterling's a 50-50. I think that will depend on how much the manager, uh, the new manager, fancies him. Cesar Aspilicueta, I think, will go. Um, you know, the players like Fafana and Enzo Fernandez, they've invested so much money in them. And I mean, you know, Enzo Fernandez has got a contract through to basically retirement age. So th th these aren't players they can just suddenly dispense with. So I think whoever the new manager is, and we think it probably still will be Pochettino, will probably be told there is a core of, of players here that we've invested heavily in that you have to work with. And then you can make a call on some of the more fringe players and who we try and sell to obviously streamline a, a really bloated squad with, I think it's 31 first team players. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why the Pochettino appointment hasn't happened yet. I think it was sort of painted last week as, as a done deal. When I spoke to people close to Pochettino and to Chelsea, they were sort of quite adamant to say, look, you know, this is the, the direction of travel. I think, you know, he likes the job, they like him. But they still have quite a lot of things to sort out. And I do think one of them is going to be one of, the, one of the elements here is control over transfers and, and, and the influence over recruitment. Because you have to remember that Todd Bowley's appointed an awful lot of senior executives at the club. They have a technical director, they have two sporting directors who've led the managerial search. They have uh, Joe Shields, who's also operating as a, in a recruitment capacity. They've got multiple voices feeding in um, to the recruitment strategy. Remember, although Todd Bowley and Bedard Bali are trying to take a back seat, they will still, you know, they still hold the purse strings, right? So they're still going to want to have final sign off on those yeah. deals. So there's multiple voices competing. And Richard Pochettino, having experienced 
ownership of PSG and obviously the, the quite famous issues that he had with Daniel Levy at Tottenham. He knows that he needs to have an element of control over who comes out, who goes out first before who comes in. And I do think that is one of the reasons why this is being held up. Um, I think also Chelsea would like him to come in now. I think we can see you know, this is a squad that's really treading water at best until the summer and just everyone's desperate for the reset that the summer and the new manager will bring in. My understanding is Pochettino is quite reluctant to do that. I think he'd rather wait until the summer. Why waste the new manager bounce, if you like, now? Why not let them get through to the end of the season? You know, he could almost watch from afar, make his make his uh, initial judgments on a few players, let them go away on holiday, then get them back for pre-season and go from there. I think Chelsea know that they would rather get players out of the door before then. And I do think this is another bone of contention without going into too much detail. The Chelsea's financial accounts, the year end is June 30. They've spent £600 million on players. They need to get players out before June 30th. If Pochettino was to start July the 1st, mm-hmm. they have a problem there. They need to get those players out sooner. So I do think they're trying to probably come to an arrangement where Pochettino maybe starts before he officially starts, if you like, or they find a way that he starts maybe at the beginning of June rather than July so that he can, while the players are away or... Um, maybe at the back end of the season he can make his, his judgments and, and they can just start working on getting players out because they do have issues with financial fair play. That is another factor, of course. No qualification for any European football of any description is a huge uh, blow to their revenue and not one that they factored into their um, accounting when they were spending all the money they spent last summer and then in January. So I think it will still happen. All the noises are still positive around it, but these are the details and the, the mm. finer points that they're having to work out in, um, in, in these days, the coming days. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.